Hey, I'm Hannah Ellis. I'm Nick Wayne. And you're, and you're watching, watching the, the Libby, Libby O, o show. show. How did she do it? Do it. Do it. Do it. Libby. Oh, oh. Nick, Libby. Oh, oh. Libby. Three. Oh, oh. Two. Nick, Libby. One. It's a Libby O show. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of The Livio Show. Our guests today are both country singers. One of them just got off the road with Carly Pierce, <laughs> and they've both got wonderful music out that they're going to perform for you today. Nick Wayne and Hannah Ellis, welcome to The Livio Show. Thank, Thank you. you. We are so excited to be here. I'm so excited as yes, well. Yes, very. We're enjoying some bourbon. Mm -hmm. Yes, music, very good. A good studio and marathon music works. Yes. Oh, my gosh. It's a beautiful space. I know, we just wanted to come and talk to you. I know. Our last, our last, our last hang was so good. I know. It was so good, yeah. and we decided to make it into an interview. Yes. What's wrong with that? <laughs> What's wrong with that? Right? Yeah. So you both have been pretty busy. Yes. Uh, you've got a brand new single out called Missing You, which yes. is so, so good. I know, it's so exciting. It's always so amazing to, you know, we write so many songs, and obviously they're in a folder where I can yeah. listen to them at any moment. But like when a song actually comes out and you know that it's on every single platform and you see it, it's just always, it feels like an exhale, mm -hmm. you know, as yeah. opposed to inhaling every single day. It just feels so good to have a new song out and just, you know, continually releasing catalogs. So everything's going so well with it as well. It's just really been amazing to see the reaction to it. Of course. Mm -hmm. And then how has it been having that single follow two of your EPs that you released last year, Coffee Black and Bourbon Neat, which you've got right now. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, on brand. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, Coffee Black and Bourbon Neat were um, just amazing kind of starting points for EPs and, and just really wanted to flow the next two. I'm doing probably two EPs again this year, hopefully. Um, you know, the year goes by so fast. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, this one's starting an EP called Fact, uh, which these songs, you know, Missing You and Hannah Being on the Road and different things like that. Mm -hmm. um, all these songs are going to be really about my present day life. And then um, we'll have another EP called Fiction which is much more artistic and using music as kind of a canvas and uh, having fun with it and sounds and, and vocals and everything else. So super excited to start rolling this out. Yeah. I am as well. And I gotta say, you both are really good at titles. Oh, I <laughs> like, I mean, every single time I listen to one of your songs, like Home and at Home yeah. Town, us, like Missing You, and then of course, Lonely Might, like oh, they're all so such good. strong titles oh, and make thanks. the listener think a little bit before they dive in. Yeah. So what does it mean to you to have a good title of a song as well as like the lyrics and melody? Well, I think you have to do something that grabs people's attention right yeah. off the jump and they go, well, I wonder what that's about, or I wanna listen to that. And sometimes it's, more obscure, it's more interesting, and sometimes it's like a missing you. You go, I know what that's gonna be about, and I'm already signed up for that. And then it's even more exciting because his is more like missing you within a relationship. And I feel like a lot of yeah, times, it's a definitely a different most angle. of the time, yeah. you think missing you, it's like Nostalgic, outside of, yeah. Past love, yeah. But it is, I mean, the title is, that's your jumping off point. We definitely start, like Hannah and I write a lot together. Mm -hmm. So like Home in a Hometown, we wrote together, yeah. was something Hannah brought in and just kind of said, and she, literally just kind of spewed out really most of the verse and chorus ideas about rushing back home, but also rushing back home <laughs> yeah, to Nashville. Yeah. So um, I think a title and things that are catching, I just think songs are so important. Mm -hmm. And I think writing songs about your life is very important, but when it's about your life and you think it's your song and then it's everyone else's song as well, that's when you've really hit the home yeah, run, you know? That's really Absolutely. it. I agree. Yeah. So what is it like, what has it been like to balance that with, you know, this age of streaming and TikTok and trends mm -hmm. and, you know, obviously creating what your fans want, but kind of recognizing that they share your story in some way, you know? Yeah. You know what? It's funny. It's like, I feel like we kind of like resisted uh -huh. all of that at the beginning because we're like art and creativity <laughs> and like, but those two things can actually go really well together. You can actually bring people into your story a yeah. little more through the social media platforms. Um, through TikTok and Instagram, mm -hmm. you go, hey, this is my story, but maybe it's yours too. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then people respond going, actually, it is my story. You know, when we wrote Home in a Hometown, I remember it was funny. I kind of, 
at first was like, I don't know, that might be like a little too personal, the tractor trailer parade and all that stuff. And Nick's like, no, I think like, I think you just write your real story. And the amount of people that have said, this song is so my life. And I moved to New York from the middle of Missouri and whatever. And, and you realize that you really are telling other people's story and having social media as a platform to really have that conversation happen has been incredible. And especially on this, you know, platform that obviously everybody in the industry is talking about is mm -hmm. TikTok. It's like this app is absolutely, it can feel like people are certainly faking it on there and, yeah. and playing things up. And that's kind of sometimes a part of artistry. People like rhinestones. They yes. like things that are overdone. Yeah. You know, if you watch any movie from the 50s and 60s, they're overacting mm -hmm. the entire time. <laughs> Really so, like, yeah. so, but for me, I think finding your voice on that platform is authenticity. People know when yeah. it's authentic and it speaks to them um, and using it more of like, hey, instead of trying to look like a superstar all the time, why don't you just film your life a yeah. little bit and apply your songs in it? And if your songs are about your life, that's it's what's so worked much for easier. me, you know, with yeah. Missing You. It's like we just hit like 4.3 million views on a song on missing you on TikTok, and yeah. Already, you know, that's awesome. 60,000 yeah. new followers overnight. And like, and they're real people. It's yeah. not just an, it's not just an algorithm. I mean, there were 3000 comments that'll make you cry and people making mm -hmm. their own videos to it and all this kind of stuff. It's not fake. It's real, you know, mm -hmm. but just also, yeah, a healthy artist mindset behind yeah. it all, Agreed. you know, well, I gotta say, my dad drives tractor trailer, oh, and wow. the walls are also very thin. That was the first. Yes, <laughs> we are in a hometown. I relate to that. So yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah, and writing that story. I mean, the more we went with it, of course, we made it sound very listenable and commercial, mm -hmm. and just such a vibe and a bop. But yeah. like putting her story into it was everybody else's story yeah. as well. Yeah, it was you know? so funny. Yeah. So missing you, mm -hmm. the first time that you heard it, yeah. What was your reaction? I saw a video that you posted. Yeah, about, yeah. I listened to it. So well, of course, it's really funny. I was thinking about it the other day because you know when he wrote that song, we had just we were still kind of in the pandemic times, but like we had just started kind of getting back on the road again, and it was kind of funny to me because it's like after like a year of being together in like a 700 square foot apartment, you would think the song would be like, please leave. <laughs> like, but really it's like the first weekend you're away and then this song happens and you kind of go, oh, wow. Like he- oh, like missing my space. Yeah, right, exactly. So it was, it was kind of funny like that that was, I remember the, I mean, I remember the first time that yeah. I heard it and it was just so, I think the and line, it was just beautiful Yeah, the too. line in the chorus that everybody is like, you know, <laughs> commenting on and everything is, I drive you crazy, but you drive me crazy. Yeah, too. I think that yeah. was the oh, pandemic man. part right that, there. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's like breathing <laughs> on top of we're, each we're other. On, we're on top of each other. Yeah, when we're together. And, and yet then, as soon as yeah, we're like apart. Like we're doing this interview together. Yeah, you know, right. It's like we're just always together really yeah. when she's here. Yeah, it's so funny. But yeah, I loved it. I mean, from... Yeah. From, and that was the other thing, speaking to that TikTok thing, what we try to do is when we have a real moment, mm -hmm. we go, oh, we should film that. Or, we, you know, it's something that actually happened. It's yeah. not like totally contrived, yeah. you know? Totally. So it's kind of cool. What has it meant to you both having like that steady relationship, that steady part of your life, mm -hmm. and then also like relating as artists and as creatives and navigating this world together? Like, what does that mean to you? Yeah, you know, it's really funny. Like. My, my song us I sometimes when I think about that song the reason I wrote it is because we have been together for so long and what we were talking about the day we wrote it was you know so many people in our lives only know us together only know us as Nick and Hannah and I think it's nice to go out into the community and and for people to have that understanding of our relationship and respect it yeah. and it, it makes it easier to bring it into our um job is that yeah. what I want to say? I would say, yeah, and just another version of that, it's like, it's something that Hannah and I have talked about often. It's like, are we doing too much work together in a yeah. sense of like, are we, but we Working we're so, all the time, yeah. We, we just so enjoy it in yeah. the community and the people that, that love us. And I don't know, we challenge each other in the most opposite ways. <laughs> and I think that was hard for me to navigate in the beginning of a relationship, you know, eight, nine years ago it was like, she's getting me to come out of my shell, which I don't like. Mm -hmm. And like, she's talking and getting me to be more outgoing, which I'm not a fan of. Yes. So now, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, and now yeah, it's like eight 
years later, us, yeah. I mean, we've just become, uh-huh. she needed more time alone and mm-hmm. things, which obviously I encourage and feel rested in and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know, it's really sharpened our artistry in ways that I could never dream anything else would have. Yeah. And I think just that alone makes us enjoy doing this. It's very easy for us. I know it's yeah. it's hard for some. Um, but I just thank God that, you know, I met Hannah, not only professionally, but obviously in my, in our life, you know, mm-hmm. that's amazing. Yeah. And you covered, uh, if the world was ending yeah. and played it on the Bobby Bone show. Yeah. yeah. So what was crazy. that like, you know, having that moment and, you know, having that was definitely our first like taste of like viral, you know, yeah, like, right. having 7 million views on YouTube and like two months is yeah. ridiculous. And then Bobby Bones calling. I mean, it was all very personal, very yeah. viral. You know, it was very nothing sweet. business. There was no money behind it, no editorial, anything. Mm. And, um, yeah, going to get to know Bobby a little more. We yeah. obviously knew Bobby from other things. Yeah. But um, that was really the first taste, I think, of just like, wow, we just wanted to do this. Yeah. No one knew the song yet still. No, it you was know, super new. We released new. that song two weeks after the original came out, which J.P. Sachs at the time had, like, 200,000 monthly listeners mm-hmm. on, yeah. on Spotify. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, so that was my first taste of being like, oh, we should always lead with our gut. You yeah, know? And like, right. We should definitely- Do the thing that feels right. People yeah. enjoy us together and also separate. Mm-hmm. So that that experience was definitely a cha- a career changing moment, I think. Yeah, For absolutely. both of us, really. For sure. Mm-hmm. And to have someone too mention on his podcast, like, hey, have you heard of Hannah Ellis and Nick Wayne? And like, yeah. that I, I'm sure is really encouraging yeah. to have people in your yeah. corner. Yeah. Because that the way that the Bobby Bones thing happened so funny is actually Kaylee Dickerson, Russell's wife. Oh yeah, that's yeah. how she was doing a Bobby cast, and she brought up our cover and was like, "Bobby, have you heard this yet? There's this girl and her husband Nick, and like da 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 da." It been out for like four hours. Yeah, like <laughs> literally, Russell and Kaylee were texting me like the moment it came out. What yeah. is this? You know, yeah. and, and so like, but that to me speaks so much to the Nashville community. It's just everybody continually lifting each other up. Even yes. just the way that we met and kind of this happened. Right. Yes. It's just this constant everyone working together, like a rising tide lifts all boats. And yeah. I think everyone subscribes to that thought and that narrative. So Absolutely. True. So I've seen like or read in your bio, you talk a lot about like paying your dues. Yeah. And, and that's a thing for everybody in this town and entertainment. Right. But what does that really meant to you? Like, what do you look back on those times that maybe there were some hard moments, but are almost kind of bittersweet of like you were working towards. Oh man. Something so uncertain that you're proud of now, you know, like you're. Yeah. I would say more than anything, it's just the amount of time that things take. It it is just like staying the course. When you see people that maybe you move to town the same time as, and maybe their stars rising faster than yours. I think that and staying focused on your path and not kind of going, well, they have, or the, these people are doing and, and just continuing on that. That was, I think more the low moments is, is trying to keep yourself from getting jealous or looking at someone else's path and saying, why not me? And then it's really the, why not you is because it's just not your time yet. And, And when the timing is right, and it happens, you're like, oh my gosh, this is so much better. And yeah. it would have been a total disaster had it happened when I thought it should happen. And and yeah, I think it's just the paying your dues is just keeping your head down and continuing to focus on where you are supposed to be going, not where everyone else around you is currently at or going, you know? Yeah. And I think just, you know, that feeling alone never goes away yeah. of wondering you know, oh, is it, it, even after a moment like something viral happens mm-hmm. on TikTok or whatever, I mean, it, it's about 72 hours later, you go, <laughs> okay, Can so I do it again? what are what are we doing now? What am yeah. I doing today? Am yeah. I even doing, you know, it's just that, that moment never goes away. And that's why I love writing with older songwriters that have been here 25 yeah. years, 30 years, anyone that's been here a long time. Who I just want to sit down and talk. I mean, uh, you know, Paul Overstreet, yeah. um, Marcus Hummin, um, Clint, Clint Lagerberg. Um, he's been here a while. Tom Douglas. I mean, mm-hmm. that's like, he. thank God he made that documentary. If you haven't seen that, you have to I go see it. Love, it. Love, love I know, Tom. I haven't either. He saw love all Tom. Of I think it's on Paramount. But literally, what we talked about in a co-write is finally on a well-produced story that he tells through his songs, but also his mindset and Mm -hmm. all just how beautiful that is it's like we are here already living our dream and when hannah says time that means sacrifice and that's 
you're you're distracted by your friends going yeah. on vacations this that, and the other whatever it's just like you have to know that you are doing something of the greater good mm -hmm. and like and really it's a service industry job mm -hmm. like you're serving people their good time and, and all these type of things i don't know i could go on and on about yeah. that but but yeah it's the road never ends in a 10-year town like you know the phrase is it's like it's that for a good reason yeah. like this town still has a grasp on somewhat developing yeah. you as you know superstars Absolutely. writers whatever whatever the case may be you yeah. know it just happens to line up around eight to 15 or 20 years <laughs> yeah right yeah rounds up a little bit yeah. yeah i so i remember this was like a little bit before i started my show but i yeah. remember talking with a coworker and we were just talking about how, like how we get through things or how we mm. stay encouraged and i was like you know what like one of the things that's helped me is you know, those really simple small moments of someone going, I, I enjoyed our conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no one else sees it, yeah. totally. but you and that person, Spurs you those on. little, you can't forget those. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You, you gotta keep them in your back pocket to remember yeah. when absolutely. you start to want more, you know? So. Yeah, absolutely. And it's yeah. easy to, to say, oh wow, a comment on Instagram post. You know, you have a couple comments or yeah. you have 3,000 comments or whatever, and you just read them, but like, you're, it's hard to understand that that's a real person yeah. with a real story about saying my my wife has been deployed for eight months mm. and I'm missing her yeah. and this song yep. they she sent it to me like she sent my post to blah blah blah, blah. like that's one comment that probably weighs way more <laughs> yeah. than we could comprehend because we don't know those people mm -hmm. but like I do know their story now it's like those things have to keep you going yeah. and have to encourage you and continually push you to the next day you know exactly yeah so i want to talk a little bit about your opry debut i watched yeah, the segment yeah and there is this moment that you end up sharing with the crowd i thought was super interesting yeah. as you say like i don't want to step into it yeah until i'm actually on stage so yeah. what was it like sharing the actual step into the circle with, with everyone there oh my gosh i was so emotional and yeah. like yeah. i think I'm, you know, I consider myself to be a professional. I've sang at yeah. very sad events and not cried. And I'm like able to get my head above like my emotions usually. And I could not that night. Like every time there was some magic, you know, and every time I looked in the crowd and saw my parents or some of my friends, I was just so overwhelmed with like gratitude yeah. of just the way that my life has played out and being on a stage that is so iconic. And and I'm so glad I waited. Cause it's yeah. like, at first it felt kind of cheesy. I was like, okay, it's a spot, like, you yeah. know. And then like, but in that moment when I walked and I really like took my space there, it was like, I was very moved. Like I actually had like a cry between the songs cause I couldn't get through like, like the whole first song, my throat kept catching. Cause I was <laughs> just like so emotional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also just like moments like the Opry, like yeah. Hannah's been here a long time and been doing this a long time. And just to witness just, you know, the eight or nine years of it, it's like, oh my gosh, there's certain moments as an artist, you have to downplay it just to be able to make Get that good it. performance. Yeah. You have to downplay to make sure that your, the, your nerves aren't. And so you downplay each moment to make it more comfortable. But there's certain moments like that you where just you're just like, it. I don't want to downplay yeah. this anymore. Yeah, like I should. want to. Yeah. I want yeah. To and I just like took on and it, and it was, gosh, it was amazing. Actually, I'm playing again this weekend for the Friday. first time since. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, so and exciting. You just got off the road with Carly Pierce. So you yes. have to talk about that real yes. fast. You're on to, you're, you know, in the middle of that. Oh my gosh, it has been absolutely incredible. She is, I, I said the other day, I was like, she is so good at sharing her shine. Like she is at like a massive mm -hmm. moment in She's her career. The best. I mean, female vocalist for both the ACMs and CMAs. That's crazy. Okay. And like, and yet every night she takes this like five minute segment and talks about me and how she thinks I'm going to be a big star and all this stuff. And I'm like, she does not owe me that at all. And for her to do that is, it's so telling of her character. And when people talk about like, oh, supporting other women, like that girl's really doing it. Absolutely. And yeah, and is. it's just been so incredible to be part of that tour and to have her constantly lifting me up. And her fans are just awesome. Like they and really also are. an artist that knows everything you're talking about. Yeah. Like yeah. a 12 year overnight success. Yeah, and like you know, she's- 
she knows the every bump in the road because mm-hmm. she's literally lived it, you know? Yeah, and I feel like every time we have, like, a post-show hang, there's new things that she's like, oh, make sure you do this, or don't do that, or <laughs> yeah, yeah. if I can tell you anything, it's this. And, like, I'm just like, yes, can you write it all down? <laughs> you yeah. know? What are, you know, some pieces of advice that each of you have received from peers that yeah. you, you know, remember when you're on the road or when you're in a songwriting session? You know, what does that mean, so... I think the one thing that, you know, I grew up here in Nashville, and so seeing songwriter kids and all these prodigies and things, like, I think the one thing that I would always tell anyone, even in music or anything, even creatively, like, it is never too late Mm. to start anything. And if you're leading with happiness and passion, you will be unstoppable. Because that's the main thing that really drives everything forward. There's never been a moment where I was bitter and created a song or created a piece of content that worked. That's yeah, never happened. So true. It's always been with happiness and positivity mm. and really just enjoying what we do. It's, that's the only way a needle's ever moved for me. And that's the only way I'll operate. It's just operate only in happiness, you know? Yeah. I think, too, something that really stuck with me is to treat everyone like they're important everyone as your equal the you find and you can watch the really the biggest stars among us the ones that go into each room and are comfortable talking to this nobody at the front desk yes. versus the ceo those people they stay in that space because they really are treating everyone like an individual human and not like hey what can you do for me what how important and are never, you no one and i'm telling you yeah and, and i think <laughs> the that, best that is, i would say who was one of my i call her my nashville mom oh yeah is leslie roberts yeah. at bmi mm-hmm. she's incredible she will she literally asked thomas rep what do you want to drink at the bar and then she comes over to me, what do you want to drink at the bar? But you, there was you, no, there's di- nothing, yeah. There's, she can't see anyone differently because she knows everybody from the incubator yeah, all the right. way to, you know, the the arenas, you know. Yeah. It's just amazing. I think that's just so important, too, because yeah. especially this town, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You just never, you no. almost you never, never know. You can really never say no. Yeah, because, right. Like, there's even people that I said no to early on in my career that have way, like, <laughs> blown up because maybe it didn't speak to me at that time or maybe it was green or whatever like there's a lot of people that taylor swift still keeps them up at night yeah you know, right like, yeah. whenever she was 13 14 yeah. and everybody said no other yeah. than those rose right. wrote those entire records Gosh, you know incredible yeah oh, that's a whole story yeah, yeah right <laughs> yeah. Like, that everyone is very very familiar with yeah yeah so um i want to really quickly before we get into because i want to talk about our bourbon sponsor today. yeah yes um and it happens to be you're a bourbon drinker yeah you also drink bourbon but wine i'm aware i'm aware of bourbon i'm good at it because i'm from kentucky like drinking it. but i'll drink it with nick sometimes yeah. but you and carly are the wine yeah, yeah 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 exactly that's where we live um but before we get into that i want to hear about um genres that you both really enjoy outside yeah. of country because sometimes i kind of hear a little bit of like pop soul yeah, yeah. and then country pop as well yeah. but you also have written for other genres yeah, so yeah. what does it mean to kind of challenge yourself and expand outside the country bubble sometimes you know i would say as a writer it's really fun for me to write for things that i know i'm or, or that are not as down the middle country you know which is what i typically sing mm-hmm. um but you know i went on a uh writer's camp to amsterdam and i was the only person there that had any country vibe at all and that was so fun to kind of just get outside of the norm for me and and write for dj music you know um and yeah it turned out pretty good actually so but i would say i would even yeah piggybacking on that it's like hannah's approach didn't really change as far as mentally and what she was writing and writing a complete song and that's what i do almost every day like of course i know sometimes i'll write for other artists and i absolutely enjoy that part of my career But I still am like tapping into a vein and letting it bleed out. There's really nothing changing mentally for me. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think music is really music. And I think as we're progressing into all these different streaming services and these playlists that are huge called Just Good Music or all this type of stuff, it's really just if it makes you feel something, then that's good music. You know, it's like that. that's what I strive to do every single day and and whatever it sounds like i just 
it doesn't really matter if, as long as it makes you feel something, you know. Yeah, I mean, so even I, with I, your I music, people can yeah. tell when yeah. it does. Yeah, it does make you personally feel totally, something, even if they don't know the story. And even just my music, like I've never led into the industry as far as what the industry is asking me to do. It's mm-hmm. really just more about me existing in a space and creating whatever I'm feeling or thinking about. Yeah. And then whatever it sounds like, it really doesn't really matter as long as it makes you feel something great. That's just kind of where I live in music, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I felt like you always like to live in something great when you travel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Leading into that. Yes. Um, but let's give a huge shout out to Off Hours Whiskey Bourbon. Yes. They're based out of the Midwest. They have a nice, very modern, you mentioned this before we started filming, a very modern look to yes. which I packaging. Love. I love the website too. I kind of, I did some deep diving on it and like, pictures of people drinking whiskey at the beach which oh, is like come on so many visuals can help you even love something even more so i love where uh yeah i love what they're doing with whiskey it's great modern bringing new palettes in it's yeah great. yeah and what i love about it too is they're very very approachable yeah so for someone who maybe hasn't very approachable you know it, it's very very well rounded yeah. and you can mix it with something you don't have to mix it with something and they're all about what you do when you're not on. on yeah right what do you do when you want to relax yeah what do you want to do mm-hmm. when you want to hang out with friends and it's just a very casual approach yeah absolutely. i um, love that so i want to play a little game with you both okay it's more of like a trivia game we love trivia that you know the answers to oh i like that mm-hmm. um even better called in my off hours which is their hashtag nice. so i'm going to ask you some questions about your off hours okay yeah favorite golf course you've ever played um i wonder if we share it we probably do um, we got to play TPC Sawgrass for the um, Tim Tebow Foundation's what? like weekend event, and I mean, that's just cool to say you've played. I mean, it's totally. obviously so stunning and beautiful. Yeah. But like, just to be like, oh yeah, when you're watching the guys hit, you're like, I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fun to have Not the, the bag tag. Yeah. You know, it's like oh, a power uh, move to like have the bag tag on your golf bag because it says our like names. See at Sawgrass, mm-hmm. Nick Wayne, you know, whatever. Um, I would say I'm going to go a little more home base here. Um, there's so many, and I really want to shout out to so many. But uh, something that's not on everybody's radar is a place called Old Stone in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Oh, that's right. you love that and place. it's one go. of my favorite, hardest, amazing courses. Um, and it's definitely not, you know, there's, they're not winning gold medals for anything. But playing a lot of golf a lot of places I really appreciated that place so yeah I would never say that something that falls under the category of the hardest golf course would be one of my favorites <laughs> yes well <laughs> it's I not gonna be up there, there for the, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. like whatever is the widest fairway that's where I'm trying to go <laughs> <laughs> yeah. favorite bourbon in wine okay so my every my every day I drink whiskey just about every day. So um, so this is on track. Yeah, this is this is normal for me. Um, I'm gonna say Knob Creek Nine Year because it's okay. under forty bucks. It's about thirty five bucks, and you can taste you know a two hundred and fifty dollar whiskey in that. You can also taste a thirty five dollar whiskey in that. So I always encourage things that are kind of right in the middle of the shelf mm-hmm. uh, instead of kind of blowing it out because you can really be let down by. Three hundred dollar bottles, yeah, you know, man. yeah, and with wine too. Yeah, though. absolutely. You know, that's what we were talking about last night. It's, and I was like, there is nothing wrong with being dependable in the wine world. You oh know? my gosh, yes. So um, I don't know which one we we were talking about this the other day. Probably, let's say today the Picus. It's P I C U S. Okay, it's like an Italian wine. Yes. Um, my sister in law randomly just picked it up one day, and she was like, I don't know, I just grabbed this. It was like twelve bucks. And it just doesn't drink like a twelve dollar wine no, at it's all, and, yeah. and it's so it's great every time. It's Table nice wine and light. Or just drinking wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. really great. Highly recommend. Good vineyard yeah. that you've been to that you really. I mean, the most beautiful vineyard I would probably say is a place out in Napa called Sidero. Okay. Um, it is just so dreamy. It's like up like their tasting room and their mm-hmm. all of that is up on like this mountainside and you're overlooking all these gorgeous vineyards and they do their tasting like right on the side of this mountain. It's yeah. just so Well we stunning. taste yeah, you taste the rose right looking over the vineyard and then you go inside the cave where they store the barrels it's and then so you do beautiful. the full wow. tasting at yeah. this big table. It's so beautiful and yeah. so like really mom and pop like no one really knows about it but like when you do the tasting it's Mm -hmm. like the six of you yeah yeah. you know yeah it's cool Mm -hmm. full experience yeah Yeah. exactly what's a city or a country that you've been to that either well 
I guess out out yeah. did your expectations, you know, was above what you thought it would be. Okay, so um, Copenhagen for me. It was literally, have you been? No, but I got an Airbnb magazine like four years ago. Really? It was all Copenhagen, and no, I was like, I have to go one day. So we, we had planned, my family and I had planned a Europe trip, and we were doing Germany and Amsterdam mm-hmm. and all this, but my little sister had a friend that lived up near Copenhagen. So we just like tacked it on the end of our trip, and I was like, nah, don't care. Like, sure, we'll go there. It, it works out. We'll fly out of there. And it was just so beautiful and quaint and, like, this gorgeous mix of, like, city but small town and absurdly clean. Like, really clean, which is interesting to note, but it's notable. Um, that was the one that I think we were all just like, okay, this is one of our favorite cities in the whole entire trip. And it was literally just, like, an add-on at the end. So that would probably be mine. Yeah. I would say, like... I love history, uh-huh. stories, charming places, anything with a story. So um, London is really kind of where my heart and soul always like rest. <laughs> when I, he had a goes trip. Out. Like Washington, D.C., New York City, uh-huh. London. Mm-hmm. That's where I want to be for two weeks at a time. Anywhere else, I'm like three or four days is good. Right. But a place like that where it's very rich in all of those things pubs, all those places, conversations with the locals. That's where that's where I live when I travel. So uh, definitely there. I knew his speed so well. And I, I had already been to London whenever he was planning a trip there. And I remember being like, this is going to be your favorite place you've ever been in your life. He was like, yeah, okay. And I was like, I'm telling you, I know you. And literally he gets there and he's been there like 24 hours. He's like, I live here now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never coming home. I was like, I told you. I'm like, it's just pubs and cute little streets, okay? Yeah. Cobble streets. Yeah. He things. was yeah. he was fangirling for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. I bet. Oh yeah. I feel like in Copenhagen people are probably like riding their bikes and eating pastries. Oh, right. Yes, yeah. I'm not kidding. It I was want. like a dream. It was like like you were like, is this a movie set? Are we on a movie set? Yeah. Like it felt like that the whole two days we were there. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, the weather is insane there, too. Mm-hmm. Good weather is always, like, a plus, for sure. Yeah. Uh, song that you love of each other's. So. <sighs> um, the lyric that's your favorite of the other. Gosh dang. I know. You go first. Um, Probably the one that, which this is really, like, a, um, I guess lucky would be the word I would say, thing that we get to share. Like, if I'm out on the road and I'm missing Nick... I can literally just listen to him sing songs. So that's kind of like, I feel like I'm cheating the system there. Yeah. But the one that I feel like I go to the most is probably You and Me. Um, he, he did this EP last year when we were getting married. It's called To Hannah. And it's basically love songs he wrote about our relationship. I know, I know. I know. Talk Aww. about setting the bar too high. Like, I know. <laughs> I feel bad for, I like feel literally like guilty. But um, there's a song on it called You and Me. And it is like, so, which are the hardest songs to write for anybody that cares. The more simple a song sounds, the more difficult it is to actually get right. Um, and I just, that's my, that's my favorite. It yeah. like can make me like cry. I've and that, and I've heard him say, I sing a lot of love songs. It's the first, I think it's probably like the, one of the only ones that the first time I heard it, it literally did make me like cry. I was like, oh man. Yeah, that's the one. Go listen to it. You and me, yeah, Nick Wayne. Yeah. I listened to it. It was really good. Yeah, and it's so sweet. Yeah. And it's so funny. People think, like, oh my gosh, Nick, you're so emotional, this, that, and the other. And really, music is where I that's am it. emotional. It's so, only like, music. Outside you're of not. music. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but no, it's so funny. But I just that's use, the only that's place where I he's get really that emotional. Out, is like not music. in like real life. Yeah, I mean, obviously. You're I tell romantic, him I yeah. Love, yeah, yeah. I mean, but, romantic in <laughs> ways. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, man, a song that. That Hannah, um, I want to say one that's out. Um, yeah, it's useless to say one that's not out yet. I know. <laughs> there's some music coming that is like I'm mind so blowing. I know we have mind so much. Oh my god, I'm so blowing. ready. Mind blowing. Mind blowing. Seriously. Um, but home in a hometown. Even though like I'm a co-writer on that song, like that is just so Hannah mm-hmm. and so like genuine uh hannah and just the way that she sings the way that she does things like there's a couple other things that like aren't out that really is what i listen to sometimes when i'm like oh i want to hear one of hannah's songs or whatever yeah. but home in a hometown just the charm that she has and Wait, just so which the, one of the ones that's not out they'll well they can go back and rewatch this later 
Um, Think of something for them to look for. That's there right. There was one uh-huh. on SoundCloud that I would listen to at the shop when I was working. Like oh my I would gosh. be like working at my mom's shop trying to pursue music and stuff. It was. Um, it wasn't one we wrote. I can't remember the name. I'll I'll find it. This is really useful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're never going to hear it anyway. So it's a little matter. Lower third. Yeah. Like, it actually means. They're never going to hear this it. This coming out. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yes, like, that's it. Yeah. I love so that. Good. Yeah. I don't know. So many. And the, <laughs> again, the music coming is like literally mind blowing. So. Oh, I love that. You that's can listen good. to everything on Spotify. Yes. Apple, all the streaming. All of it. Bourbon, eat coffee black, or vice versa. Yeah. Out of order. (laughs) Whichever (laughs) order you need it. That's right. And us and Home and Home. Yeah. And you're also going to be putting out a whole record. (gasps) Oh my gosh. I know. We're like in the middle of getting it all done. Um, It sounds like it's probably going to end up coming first quarter next year, just giving ourselves time to, to finish it out. But it is like, oh, I'm so excited. And so, like, I really love the songs so, so much. And we're being a little bit precious about it. Like, we really want this first record to be, like, um, so me and storytelling of me, but also relatable to you. Mm-hmm. And so so we're really, like, hand-picking each song very specifically. It's not like, oh, okay, we just need some, we need to finish this out. So it's taking longer because yeah. of that, but, but I'm really excited about it. You should be. Yeah. So yeah. I am. <laughs> yes, it's going to be insane. I love and you're going to hear Missing You in just a moment and us. Yes. Uh, before we get to the music, Off Hours has a gift for you both that I brought. Oh, yeah. So no uh, since you both golf, what? I thought that a nice white golf hat. Oh, so cute. With oh, off those Hours. Are great. Those are amazing. Those look I amazing. I have one as well somewhere, but uh, oh, those are so sweet. Yeah. That's perfect. I wear hats like this all the time when I'm Imperial's traveling. Imperial is like my favorite so golf great. hat, yes. too. They're great when you have three-day unwashed hair, and you're like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, those are when they're really great. This is me, this is me to every song, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please, yes. And then I that love, is I love, so love good. Them. That yeah, branding amazing. is amazing. They're killing it. So yes, yeah. I'm going to set this right here. Go check Cheers. them out. Drink off hours. Thank yes. You. yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Off hours. Thank you. Yes. This was so wonderful. fun. Yes. Yeah. Too easy. Amazing. That's what I like to hear. Uh. <laughs> So go check out their music. Uh, follow Hannah, Hannah Gray Ellis on Instagram, Nick Wayne Music as well. And go stream. Go follow. Yes. Join. And uh, thank you for watching the Libby O Show. Visit LibbyOShow.com for more info, for more videos, more content. And I'll see you all next time.